Superman, Yoda, Doctor Who, welcome to Earth. The humans of Earth are trying to evaluate whether something like humans could evolve on other planets. You guys are kind of like humans, but you evolved on other planets, right? Good, good. Now, about 30 million years ago, the ancestors of humans were a kind of monkey. They had tails, then they lost their tails and became apes. Do you guys have tails? Huh, no you don't, okay. We have a bunch of tailless, ape-like aliens here. Now, uh, humans used to live in trees. That's why we have these, that's why we have these opposable thumbs. And uh, so we can grab onto tree branches and uh, pepper grinders like that. See, we have opposable thumb. Uh, now, if you guys used to live in trees, then you'll have thumbs too. So let's see your thumbs. Okay, all three of you have thumbs. And Yoda's, yours is a pretty big one though. So we can say with some confidence, we can deduce that you guys used to live in trees on your planets. Okay, good. Got some agreement here. Now, after you watch the story of human evolution, please let us know if your evolution was anything like ours. Okay? Greetings, Earthlings. How are humans different from other species? And how are we the same as other species? And should we expect these differences to have evolved elsewhere? as they seem to have evolved in Superman, Doctor Who, and Yoda. So here we have some of our cousins, our ape cousins and old world monkey cousins. Here are human beings. And for example, about six or seven million years ago, we had a common ancestor with chimps and human beings. And then we have a common ancestor with gorillas about nine million years ago. And then we have a common ancestor with orangutans 16 million years ago, etc. Now, one thing in common that all of our our cousins here have are opposable thumbs. I have an opposable thumb. It helps me hold a slide advancer. And here's a human and a, probably a chimpanzee or a gorilla holding, showing us the opposable thumb. Now, let's put this into the context. Here's a timeline. We have the Big Bang origin of the universe 13.8 billion years ago on the far left in that squiggly bird's nest thing. And then the Earth and Sun about 4.6 billion years ago. Origin of life on Earth about 4 billion years ago and opposable thumbs, let's put them on here. Oh, maybe about 30 or 40 million years ago, opposable thumbs. But, uh, well, let's look, here's, here's a picture of a monkey. These are x-ray images of a monkey and a human being, and the human being has a leash. They're connecting the monkeys to around the neck. And you can see that the monkey has a tail. And if you look closely, you can see in this x-ray image of a human being that we too have a tail, but it's kind of an atrophied tail. And it's kind of curving around there, and you can't really see it. And so it's inside of our body as opposed to the monkey's tail, which is outside. And uh, what about walking? You can see that the monkey is quadrupedal, walking on all fours, and this human being is walking on two feet called bipedal. So when did those things happen? Well, when did we lose our tail? Well, let's look at this phylogenetic tree again, and we can say all of these guys are apes. And so between about 29 million years ago and 20 million years ago, uh, monkeys lost their tails and became apes. And so 29 to 20 million years ago is when that happened. What about walking? Well, we became bipedal much more recently, about five to about four million years ago. So if we put that on our timeline, there are opposable thumbs. Here's our no tails between 29 and 20. And then we, have, we became bipedal about five to four million years ago. How about, look at this, cat, monkey, and human brains. When did we get such big brains? Well, that's something that we look at fossil evidence and we can tell that somewhere between about 3 million and about 200,000 years ago is when our brains really got much bigger than our other cousins. And what about fire and cooking and talking and speech and stories and music and dancing and having much less hair than our other relatives and then putting on clothes. When did those things happen? Those are much more recent and you put them on the table here somewhere around one or two million years ago that those things appeared. And what about what about stone tools and metal tools? When did they happen? Well again stone tools about a few million years ago, one or two million years ago, metal tools more recently. And then what about agriculture, farming, where we get our food from? 
And then there's cities. We live in cities. When did we start living in cities? Well, we look at the fossil record and agriculture, and we see that these things are about 10 or 20 million years old. And uh, that is the record of, of the more recent things that have happened to us that make us a little bit different from other species. Also, writings. That's something that's really recent. And here's the distribution of alphabets around the world. The Latin alphabet is what the word writing is written in the Latin alphabet, sometimes called the Roman alphabet. And then you can see the green, there's Arabic, and the, the purple where Cyrillic is spoken in Russia. Then there's yellow Chinese writing and about a couple of dozen other writing systems. That's their global distribution today. But the earliest ones were about 5,000 years ago. So we can put that down on this plot as well at the bottom, writing about three, well, four, five, five thousand years ago. So let's summarize that. Here we have this timeline. Here we have the Big Bang origin, the, the origin of the sun and earth 4.6 billion years ago. Then what are the tools we use to, to explore these different regions? So I'm, my, I'm the family genealogist, and I'm, that's a, a genealogy of me and my parents and my grandparents and my great-grandparents, etc. And with genealogies, you can go back, oh, maybe 500, if you're really lucky, maybe even 1,000 years into the past. To go back even further, we can use genetics of different groups of humans, and we can see that humans are about uh, 100 or 200,000 years old. And then we go back even further to hominids. These are critters that uh, are the last, let's say, five million years or so. And we can look at the fossils of these things and see what our ancestors looked like between about five million years ago and today. And then we can go even further by comparing these genes with other primates. And those are the things that have evolved recently in our past. And these are the things that we need to ask ourselves, could these things have happened, could have evolved on other planets? You've all just seen how humans got thumbs, lost their tails, got bigger brains, invented telescopes, and became functionally equivalent humans. We are looking for aliens who are functionally equivalent humans, the kind we can talk to. Are all you guys functionally equivalent humans?